Um, so I just got this off of Wikipedia. And, um, but basically, like, blood cells are important, uh, people are important, um, and blood is kind of what, you know, you know, it oxygenate, oxygenates the system, uh, it carries nutrients um, that in turn um, power other, other organs, and if there's any doctors in here, I mean, this is sort of a loose analogy, so don't, don't nail me on anything until afterwards. Um, you know, like I said, you know, the blood pumps the, um, I mean, the heart pumps the blood, um, that in turn powers the brain, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and then we also have our white blood cells, and, you know, these are sort of like, you know, they protect the body from anything that they deem to be, like, uh, dangerous, and these for me are like the police. <laughs> um... And if there's any police in the crowd, you know, uh, s same thing. Um, and I've, I've met quite a few of these of these types. Um, and of course, we have other monitoring systems that are becoming more and more popular these days, like the CCTV. Um, <laughs> and so this is the T cell in action. Um, No, no tasers just yet. Um, more of the same. Um, more of the same. And as you can see, you know, police are necessary, of course, but you know, it's a whole debate on you know whether whether or not you know excessive force is used sometimes, or you know, in the case of street art and graffiti, if um, you know there is excessive charges against people for doing this sort of thing. Um, so it's sort of the question of like. Um, you know, going overboard and attacking attacking things that you know aren't really harmful, and you know, I like to put this slide up. A case of like a cold sore when you know you have some sort of immune system disorder where you know it the body attacks itself. Isn't that pretty? <laughs> um, so then when we get to the uh, the other part, nutrients. Um, you want to keep your blood cells healthy. You want to keep the people. Uh, healthy, keep them stimulated, and when we're kind of taking this back to public space. Um, you kind of have to look at you know what's out there, you know not just what's in your home, but what's out there in public space, and how you're going to keep people visually stimulated. Um, and say, and sorry for saying um so much; it's a bad habit of mine. So the blood cells, they like pr uh, protein, they like B12, and uh, blood cells need. Things like uh, spinach, um, but when we get in the public space, a lot of what we see in the visual landscape tends to be billboards, and they tend to actually, um, at least what I've noticed, they tend to kind of try to sell you stuff that's not so good for you. Um, you know, gambling and 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 cigarettes, and and I do smoke cigarettes, but it's not something that you know, necessarily want to do. Um, and when this starts to hit a sort of maximum, you know, like in New York City, there's so much signage that, you know, almost kind of getting visually bombarded to the point where you end up looking at your shoelaces or, you know, working on your Blackberry. Um, you know, I think New Yorkers, they kind of get used to this sort of thing and they basically just tune it out. But um, if, if you don't go to New York City a lot and you get to a place like Times Square, you're just sort of like, whoa, you know, where's where's this going? So then we come to graffiti. Um, graffiti is a lot like the whole signage phenomena, um, and not surprisingly, it did start in New York City. And you know, a lot of people. One of my good fr uh, friends in in London, uh, he told me that, you know, he used to paint signs and. And after painting signs for a while, he felt like he could go paint over anybody else's sign or paint on anybody else's wall just because his, his philosophy was that if you're going to make me look at your sign, you know, you can look at my sign too. And one of the things about graffiti, um, it kind of goes with that basic philosophy like, you know, we live here, we can make our mark here too. And 
Um, graffiti write, writers, I mean, it's another worldwide phenomena. Um, maybe a little bit less in uh, the United States. I mean, it's, it's popular in New York, but when you go across Europe, a lot of cities um, have quite a lot of it, and some cities are completely crushed, um, and all the train lines, you can see it for just miles and miles. And, and a lot of those cities, too, they don't really go out there and make those sort of rests that you see happening in the United States. I guess they have um, other, things, other things to do. And the charges are kind of not so heavy as they are in the United States. All my friends have gotten in trouble for doing this sort of things. Even one of my friends, his first offense, he had to do two months in jail. This was in Washington, D.C. Um, but, you know, to kind of make that comparison to the advertisements out there, which are completely sanctioned by the government because it's sort of like a economic benefit to this sort of like trade-off of like, you know, I mean, it's sort of like the government in D.C., like here we see a, a clever ad campaign of turning one of our uh, metro buses into a gigantic Snickers bar, <laughs> which I think is kind of like, I don't know, I don't think it looks that great. Um, you know, and then to bring it back, here's a, you know, a piece on a, on a subway car, and difference is that whoever did this can get in a, quite a lot of trouble, whereas it's the opposite. Um, and then we see sort of kind of uh, evolution of, well, let's not say evolution, let's just say the lateral direction of um, graffiti by some artists. This is Cause, and uh, he started breaking into the the sign sign stops, um, you know, at the bus, bus stops, and you know he would put his figures on top of the existing ads. So he's kind of hacking into the the system here because he's taking things that are out there, and rather putting up something else out there, he's he's hacking what's already there, and this is kind of like a, you know, the roots of sort of this uh, urban strategy of going for more pieces that are in the conceptual realm. This is another piece I saw at the uh, Wooster Collective site the other day. I think this one's pretty good. Um, this is another guy's uh, street artist neck face. He's based in New York. He's a pretty young young guy and uh, pretty fearless. And I don't know. It's it's interesting with this guy too because. He does this kind of stuff, but he does a lot of gallery shows, and his gallery shows actually, you know, sell out. Um, and he's probably probably doing pretty well. You know, he's a, he's a skater. He can't be more than like twenty or so, but you can kind of see he's, he's he's got balls and he's he's clever. And you know, I like this because you know Batman's got his little ears and his neck face character, so it integrates well with the piece. But yeah, I mean, if we go back to the T-cell, um, you know, graffiti arrests for New York City alone for 2007 is over close to 4,000. And to me, that's just sort of like, well, it shows that the city spent a lot of time and effort to try to combat this problem. And while, you know, it's easy to make an argument that, you know, someone's um, door or what have you if they want it not to have stuff on it, they shouldn't have to paint over it five or ten times. But at the same time, if you look at New York City and the amount of visual clutter up there, it's sort of a way almost to balance things out because the, here at least you have things made by the people that live there versus just all these ads which are targeting people as consumers. And I think it's a cozier city when you see people out there putting their art up but you, you can disagree with me on that.